Won't you pray with me? Save me, Lord, from fearing so much my own frailty that I forget your mighty power. Help me to speak what I believe you have given me and leave to you results and consequences. Amen. Amen. I will take you by a way not known. You will be anxious at times, even fearful, but don't give in to it. Acknowledge it and move on because there is beauty in the way not known. No need to dread or presume that something bad is going to happen along the way. Will there be, will there be peaks and valleys in the way not known? Absolutely. But you will recognize my handiwork in the peaks and feel the comfort of my presence in the valley. Trust me, and I will blow your mind. <laughs> These were the words that I heard on the drive back to Connecticut from South Carolina about three years ago. It was a beautiful Sunday morning, much like this, a Sunday afternoon, uh, and eight hours into the drive, we stopped in Ashburn, Virginia. Now, Ashburn is the home of my cousin, Demetria, whom I had picked up just 48 hours earlier to travel home to South Carolina uh, for the funeral of a dear cousin. A 12 to 14 hour drive by car, I am still not sure of what possessed me to drive instead of fly, but drive we did all 13 hours of that trip. Perhaps spirit knew that there was a conversation that needed to be had or a lesson to be learned. And so Didi and I said our goodbyes. I activated the GPS and off I went, or so I thought. Five or so minutes into the journey back to Connecticut, the GPS lost its Wi-Fi connection. Anybody? feeling oh, the anxiety, right? <laughs> right? The GPS signal lost its Wi-Fi connection. The gas station that I had passed began to flash before my eyes like a gaudy neon sign, and a slow panic ensued because I realized once reconnected, the GPS was probably not going to lead me to the major interstate that I was accustomed to driving on my trips back and forth from Connecticut to South Carolina. After a few moments of panic and fighting back tears, I decided to turn around and make my way back to my original starting point. In the midst of my panic, I remembered something that my father told me when I first started driving. He said, Mimi, if you ever get lost, go back to your starting point. And so I, I did just that, and wouldn't you know it, I pulled into that gas station that I had passed earlier. I was going too fast to stop. It had passed me by by the time I realized, oh, you probably should have stopped for gas. So I topped off the tank and then asked the gentleman at the pump to my left if he would mind uh, putting my, uh, typing my address into his GPS so that I could see the route ahead. Just as he was accessing his GPS system, my Wi-Fi signal re-engaged and we compared routes. And beloveds, nothing had changed. The way home was still the same. And so instead of resisting, I leaned into the moment and I went with the flow. And within minutes, I was overwhelmed by the beauty of the landscape. The experience was like driving through an Ansel Adams exhibit, and I'm not exaggerating, it was just glorious. And just as I was, I, I was brought to tears, I heard the still, a still small voice whisper, I will take you by a way that you have not known. But fear not, for I am with you. For the next several hours, I drove the back roads of Virginia into the rolling hills of Pennsylvania, 
with nothing but open green pastures, mountains, and rivers as far as the eyes could see. I realized in this moment that if I had persisted on having my way, which was finding the nearest exit to Interstate 95, I would have missed the beauty of the unknown countryside that day. It is part of the human condition, is it not? To be drawn to the familiar, that which we know and trust. The familiar is predictable and it is comfortable. We know what to expect from the familiar. Such was the case with the Israelites as they transitioned from their years in captivity by the Babylonian Empire. Isaiah, our prophet for this morning, is speaking to the community. They are learning to embrace the reality of their newfound freedom in ways that was not without challenge. The path to deliverance did not look as it had looked in the past. They too, like I, had to trust that God was in the midst of them as they navigated an unfamiliar path. Isaiah's words to the ancient Israelites reminds me of the strong urge we modern day disciples often feel to stay with the familiar roots of our lives, our personal lives, our communal lives, our church lives. Somewhere between birth and adulthood, our childish sense of adventure and exploration gives way to our need for predictability. As I continued my drive, I began to voice dictate my experience on the cell phone. It was a holy experience. I was truly in awe of God in that moment. Not to mention that you never know when you're going to need some good information for sermon fodder. <laughs> it's today, right? But more than anything, it felt important to record my thoughts, to be present to the moment. I could not shake the earlier deep sense of fear I had at the thought of traveling away that was unfamiliar to me. As a sing single female traveling alone, I was hypersensitive about my safety. And then I thought about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus and our ongoing journey of strengthening our muscles as we grow in faith and love and as we grow in faith and love as followers of the way. What would have it had meant for me to embrace that unfamiliar route back to Connecticut through the lens of inquiry, leaning in? How might that have changed the experience for me and ameliorated some of my fear just by simply asking, God, oh, this is different. What are you doing? What do I need to pay attention to, be present to in this moment? I have a friend who was an avid hiker and curious about his process, I asked how he prepared for his hikes, both mentally, physically, and spiritually. And my friend shared that the first step in preparation most, most often is to pick a trail with some challenge and a rewarding view in general. But experiencing nature's beauty, he said, is always first on my mind. Being in the wilderness brings me closer to God, and the beauty I have seen makes me curious about creation. My friend's phrase, experiencing nature's beauty, is always first on my mind, affirms my experience on the drive back to South Carolina. That unfamiliar route was not to be feared or taken with dread. And neither are the wildernesses of our lives. Once I gave into the moment, I could see the beauty all around me, and suddenly the experience was incredibly spiritual and fulfilling. What if people of faith, what if we opened ourselves to that kind of approach when fear and challenge comes? Making the experience of, our, of beauty our ultimate goal when we are faced with unknown paths. It's so easy for us, and I, 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 I will speak for me, sometimes it's easier to lean into the bad that we think is going to happen. 
than to imagine and use our spiritual imaginations to see what good might lie ahead. And at risk of sounding Pollyannish, I know that this is more challenging in practice than it is for me to simply sit up here, stand up here and preach to you about. Launching into the face of the unknown, trusting God and the spirit of God within us. Speaking those things that are not as though they were. Walking by faith and not by sight. Beloveds, there is something to be said about one's perspective in the midst of reality. And in a moment of transparency and vulnerability, I admit that I am challenged when it comes to navigating the delicate balance of perspective versus reality. The level of anxiety in our country is rising by the moment across the bounds of race. And what I didn't say, uh, in terms of my navigating reality versus perspective, doing that situated in my body, my personhood as a woman of color, and, and thinking about the level of anxiety that is rising in our country about around the bounds of race, gender, religion, the political spectrum, and socioeconomic realities. The prolonged anxiety of a life-altering pandemic that just won't let us go. It is important that we still wear our masks to keep ourselves and each other safe, even though it's weary. The rising cost of goods that meet our necessities. The looming potential of an economic recession, though the pundits say perhaps not so. The proliferation of domestic terrorism and supremacist extre extremism. And lastly, an ongoing threat to our democracy and the guarantee to free and fair elections, voting rights, bodily autonomy, marriage equality, and the right to love beyond the bounds of race. With the weaponization of morality and the codification of such into laws, what makes us think at this juncture that the 13th and 14th Amendments won't be reversed? Beloveds, as I stand before you this morning, there is much about our future that we just don't know. And yet, as people of God we, and people of faith, we are called to be agents of hope and change that liberate all of God's people. Because until all are free, none are free. Because until all are free, yes, none are free. Really, we must learn to live in community and want for our siblings what we, the good we want for ourselves, want for our siblings and do the work because of the systems that we live in, right? To make sure that it is accessible to all. Church, as you continue to live into your public witness as a welcoming, historic, progressive community of faith, continue to do the liberating, life-giving work of justice and caring for people's souls. You and Pastor Tamara are making a difference in this community because you see, We're all in this together. And while the way ahead may not be fully known, particularly in this season in our country and so many of our lives, we do know the way maker, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. The way may not be known, but we know who holds our hands. Ephesians 3.20 reminds us, and it is true that our God can do exceedingly abundantly above more than we could ever ask or imagine. The prophet Jeremiah boldly proclaims in chapter 29, verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future and a hope. Sometimes we have to speak back affirmatively the word of God to ourselves to situate us and steady us when the way is not known. So keep doing the work, church. 
inviting people deeper into their faith day by day, exploring what it means to be a disciple of Jesus in these uncertain times, intentionally leaning into journeying those unfamiliar paths where you may have no clue what God is up to. This, my friends, is deep water work. But God does God's best work in the deep end. 370 years of ministry and the fullness of your story is yet to be written. Yes, you will have to figure out that divine roadmap. And in the words of a dear pastor friend, there may be some devilish booby traps along the way, but you can trust that God will be in the midst of you, right there in the middle of a way not known. Yes. Yes. But I will take you by the hand those who do not know the way, who can't see where they're going. I'll be a personal guide to them, directing them through unknown country. I'll be right there to show them what roads to take, to make sure they don't fall into the ditch. These are the things that I will do for them sticking with them, not leaving them for a minute. Siblings in Christ, God is calling you into the deep, into the way not known. So let us move out in defiant confidence, courage, and with hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. For it is there that you will find beauty in the way not known. The rain is over and gone. The winter is passing by. The time of singing is come, and the clouds have parted from the sky. Gone, my 
we can focus as we trust our God to show us the way. You are so needed in this community, in this city. I give God thanks for you and your pastor. And I just know that God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly greater, greater, than you could ever ask or imagine. So get ready and put that, though, that, that spiritual imagination, get it to working. Because God needs you to be ready. And so, beloveds, this ends our time together. We have done what God has called us to do. I pray that you are inspired, that your spirit is fortified for the week ahead. And so now, may the great ruler of high places and the God of many names touch you and you and you and you, those of you online, all of us, with the wind that will keep us strong not just today, but in the days to come. May it be so. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.